Hey guys, I wanted to bring you a message today that I really hope blesses you, that will help you as much as it will help me. I really hope because what I have to say to you, I'm also saying to myself, I feel that many watchmen, not just those who have YouTube channels or uh, media accounts, but those who are watching, not necessarily posting or sharing, but sharing maybe with those around them in real life. But I'm talking about everyone who is watching, sorry, I have a hair. Everyone who is watching for Jesus' return. And I feel that all of these watchmen were getting weary. And that's because of many different things. We have stuff going on in our own life, but we also are facing persecution not just from those who do not believe in Jesus, but from the brothers and sisters as well, unfortunately. For those who believe that we shouldn't be watching um, and that no one knows the day and the hour, so why do we watch mentality. So we're getting very battle torn. So what I have to say, it goes hand in hand with the difficulties that we are going through. And that is that the most important thing that you can be doing as a Christian now or ever is drawing close to Jesus because we get our strength from him. We get our understanding from him. Those who have revelations or the spirit is speaking to them and telling them that Jesus is coming soon. And this is not just from dreams and visions. Um, this is also from the word of God that Jesus is coming soon and Jesus is making things known to us. We get our understanding from him. And so I encourage you that if you are a watch person or maybe if not, maybe you're a person who is, is watching this and you're a believer, but you're new to this, um, watching for the rapture, or you're also new to being a Christian or you believe that we shouldn't be watching at all if you are a believer in Jesus which means you believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose again and that one day we will soon be with him in our new glorified bodies if you're a believer then this message is for you like I said it is just for me as it is for you this isn't me talking to you I prayed before this that this is the Holy Spirit talking to you. That especially in these times, we have to draw close to Jesus. We have to work on nurturing our relationship with Him. There is no priority greater than that. And it's hard to say, but our relationship with Jesus is more important than our family more important than our friends, more important than our children, more important than our husband or wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, more important than our chores. And believe me, that cuts me deep because I'm a Martha, almost 100%, not quite, but I love to do things. I have my lists. I like to check off my list. You can ask my husband, I write a list and tell him to work on it too and he's like what <laughs> he's like I do things without a list <laughs> but that's how I am and so I need to realize that spending time with Jesus is more important than me running into my day full-on running into problems and and trying to work them out on my own because it's not something that I can do on my own my strength comes from Jesus our strength is not in ourselves. If we look within for strength, we're gonna come up shorthand. We have to look for look to Jesus for our strength. So if we do not have a strong relationship with Jesus, and that's gonna look different for all of us. We are all in a different walk. Jesus uses us where we are, don't get me wrong. You can be a brand new born again believer in be doing awesome, amazing things for the kingdom. 
but we also need to be working on a relationship with Jesus so that we do have the strength and the abilities to go out and help other people, whether that be our family and friends, whether that's raising children, whether that's um, working on a relationship with a spouse or having a YouTube channel where you are watching and sounding the alarm for Jesus' soon return, whether you have a ministry of some other sort. And in a way, we all have a ministry. God has placed us in some area to do His work and has equipped us with the Holy Spirit to be able to do it. But we need to draw close to Jesus and nurture that relationship with Him or those things are going to suffer. And we need to work at it. Um, I need to work at it. I, th I think I'm just preaching to myself here <laughs> when I say that because I love reading the Bible, even if it's only for 10 or 15 minutes at the start of my day. And I also love just praying while I'm driving, whether it's going to work, going to the gym, going to the store, it doesn't matter. That's what I do to draw close to Jesus. And that's what all of us should be doing. But like I said, it's going to look a little bit different for everyone. But we need to make it our priority to draw close to Jesus and nurture our relationship with him. How can we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. So if you did, if not, I'm sure you probably stopped watching the video already. But <laughs> we worship him in spirit and truth. We pray. We cast our anxieties upon him. We ask for strength and wisdom. We have not because we ask not. So ask for it. Ask for healing, whether that's physical or mental, or you're just plain tired. You're sick and tired of the world and you're sick and tired of um, persecution. You're tired of just everything, life's problems. Tell God about it. He already knows what you're going through. He's not just sitting back and thinking, oh, I didn't realize that they're in so much pain right now. I didn't realize that they were fighting with their spouse. I didn't realize that, oh, no, he's not doing that. He is saying, please, I already know what you're going through. Come to me with your problems. I want to hear it from your own mouth. He really wants to talk about these things with you. He wants you to pour out your heart to him and tell him what you're going through. He knows exactly how you're feeling. It's not that he doesn't know and that's why you have to tell him. But you need to have that communion with the Father in order to draw close to Jesus. That happens through worship and prayer. It also happens through reading, reading the Word of God, reading God's truth, equipping yourself. I'm going to read a scripture and I was not set up for this. I apologize. <laughs> I should have had my Bible open already. But let's see. I think it's 2 Timothy 3.16. I really hope I'm right. Okay, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We need to know what's in God's word to be able to have discernment. The Holy Spirit will discern for us, but we need to have that understanding of the truth from God's word. So that way, no matter what someone says to us, we can discern whether it is correct or not. The Holy Spirit will help you understand God's word. Don't feel like it's daunting. And yeah, it can seem a little daunting, especially for a new believer, especially if you're younger. Um, it's a really big book, and but it's meant, all of it is meant for us. It's meant for the believer. And you can take it one small bite at a time. And it's the same with prayer. You don't have to say some fancy 30 minute long prayer. If God leads you to do that and you're praying and worshiping in the spirit during that time, then that's awesome. Um, but that's not gonna happen every single day, more than likely not. Um, we have 
things that have to be taken care of. Like I said, family, kids, this and that. But spending maybe five minutes or 10 minutes, maybe even 15 minutes of your time reading God's word and in prayer will help you take care of those other things and you'll be more equipped for it. And whenever someone heaps persecution upon you or you are attacked in some way, whether it be at work or at home or among friends, unfortunately that happens um, because we're not perfect, we are fallen and we do let each other down, unfortunately, you're ready for whatever is thrown at you. And it's priority, priority to be close to Jesus. He is waiting with open arms. He is excited. I mean, he, he wants you to be running to him just as he is running to you. If you seek out Jesus, you will find him. If you knock, the door will be opened. And guess what? Jesus is knocking on your door. And I'm not just talking about non-believers here. I'm talking about believers. You need to open up your heart and open up your mind to Jesus. And I mean that and because you're already saved. It's not that you lost your salvation. Whether there is some sin that's in your life that's keeping you up that you feel is keeping you apart from Jesus, you know what? It's even more a uh, reason to run to Jesus, to run back to him, to run to him. And um, I keep going back to the story about the prodigal son, but that's very much it. Whether you are the prodigal son or the prodigal son's brother, either way, Jesus is very excited to commune with you, to have that relationship with you, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been. So we need to rest in that. We need to rest in Jesus. And I wanted to mention that Chelsea Bedell did a video and um, what is today, like the 10th or something or 11th? Shoot, I don't know. This is what happens whenever you work night shift. You don't know what day it is anymore. <laughs> I know it's a Saturday. Well, she did a video. I believe it was her last video and it was titled something along the lines of Jesus is still coming, but I have something else to share with you or something else to tell you. In that video, she also talks about drawing close to Jesus, and I recommend you go watch it. She has been through some hard times, just like the rest of us have as well. And, um, you know, we may feel like we're at the end of our rope, that there's no hope for us, um, that you're going through something that is so difficult that you're shutting yourself in and you're pushing yourself away from Jesus and you're pushing yourself away from other brothers and sisters in Christ. And we shouldn't be doing that. Um, we should be drawing close to Jesus, nurturing our relationship with him even more so, especially whenever we are depressed and anxious and sad. And it doesn't make someone else better than you just because you messed up in some area or you feel that they have a better relationship with Jesus and sometimes brothers and sisters in Christ can be a little envious of each other and that really shouldn't be the case. I may I have to remind you that Jesus has just as much want to have a relationship with you as he does with the next believer. As he does with a non-believer too. He wants everyone to be saved. So we should be drawing close to him during this time and not pushing away. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that if you are watching for Jesus' return and you are very weary and very worn out and sad or even a little bit depressed because these high watch times have come and passed, you need to keep in mind that the priority is your relationship with Jesus and it may you may have to do things a little bit different to get there, okay? Whether that means taking a break from social media, whether that means that you are taking a break from posting your own videos or your own content, or if that means um, turning off your phone completely for a day or two. <laughs> it's gonna look a little bit different for everyone, depending upon what is gonna help you focus on Jesus. and. There is nothing wrong with watching for Jesus' return. Jesus commands us to watch. But more important than that, the greatest commandment of all is to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And in order to do that, 
guys, we need to be working our relationship with Jesus. It's very, I keep saying it's a priority because it is. And um, watching is important too. But if it is getting in the way of your relationship, then something has to give. And that better not be spending time with Jesus. Hopefully, you put down the phone, you turn off the computer, and you open the Word of God. And I've been struggling with this as well. Um, I know it has been a few days since I've posted uh, anything as far as a video. And that's because I've been trying every day to make it a point to spend time in God's Word and to spend time praying and um, I still am falling short of that <laughs> because I am at home uh, of course when I'm not at work I'm very much a homebody so I'm always doing things whether it's laundry or cooking cleaning whatever it is because I do want to do those things and I do them as unto the Lord and um during that time, I've been trying to find time to listen to worship music while I'm cooking or cleaning or uh, praying while I'm doing so as well, but I still get distracted. So I'm not quite where I want to be. And it's very good that I'm not satisfied with where I'm at because I think that we need to all be striving for something better, for, uh, uh, for furthering our relationship with Jesus. Let me put it that way we should all be striving to draw closer to Jesus and not just be satisfied with where we were where we are at in this moment because no matter how many times we read the Bible whether it's once or a million times there is still things to be learned we still have a deficit um, and the Holy Spirit is still teaching us we have a deficit of knowledge and whenever you realize that you don't know everything, pride is cut short and humility sets in and Jesus will meet you right where you are and the Holy Spirit will continue to teach you. If you feel that you have learned everything there is to learn and that you are so tight knit with Jesus that you couldn't be any closer, then you won't grow. You won't grow in Jesus, you won't grow as a Christian, um, you're not going to continue to read God's Word. You may not even be spending as much time with Jesus as you used to, and it, you can backslide a little bit in that. So, um, and let me encourage you, for those of you how, who have backslid in your relationship with Jesus, there is no shame in that. Um, Jesus is not judging you for that. He wants you to just come back to Him. That's all that He wants. He does not want, he desires mercy and not sacrifice. He is not looking to condemn you because now that you are a believer and your sins have been forgiven, there is no more condemnation for you. You are loved by him and you are a child of the king. So he is very much pleased with you because you have believed upon his son. You have believed upon Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. And he is pleased with you because of that. You are righteous because of that faith, because of what Jesus did for you and not because of anything that you've done. So if you backslid or you feel like there's some sin that is keeping you from communing, from communing, <laughs> my, I'm trying my hand at these big words and it's a little embarrassing sometimes when they don't come out quite right. So he wants that communion with you. So don't let that sin get in the way. Don't let that worry, that anxiety, that depression get in the way. Seek him out now and he is going to, you're, you're going to see his face and he's not going to hide from you, okay? And sometimes it may feel like you're, you're so depressed that you don't hear him speaking to you, but you need to let go of whatever is in your heart that is preventing you from hearing his voice and open up your ears to him. I just feel like someone needs to hear that. Um, I wasn't going to get so far into this message. I don't like my videos being really long because I know we are busy people and we have other things to do besides to watch YouTube videos all day long. But just to recap, 
as I've said probably 20 or 30 times already, the priority that you can do right now, the most important thing that you can do right now as a Christian is draw close to Jesus and nurture your relationship with him. Okay, guys. Well, that's it for today. I really hope that you will have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope to see you all in the clouds very soon. Shalom.